Hi everyone. My name is Katie Fitzsimons, and this is an explainer for our new study, Ergodicity Reveals Assistance and Learning from Physical Human-Robot Interaction. The study was conducted by myself and Todd Murphy. We're part of the Neuroscience and Robotics group at Northwestern University. This work was done in collaboration with Jules DeWald and Ana Maria Acosta of the Northwestern Physical Therapy Department. In this study, we analyze the body as a communication channel and motion as an information carrying signal. So we can measure the quality of movement by asking how much information about the task is encoded in the motion. We often think about animals taking in information through senses like vision, touch, or internal sensors that give us information about where our body is in space and how much force our muscles are exerting. Sensory inputs are encoded in electrical signals that are processed by the central nervous system. Then we act on the information by generating outgoing messages to the motor system. When a human and a robot are physically connected and trying to perform a task together, the central processing unit on the robot needs some way to evaluate and modify the interaction. However, it's unclear what metrics are appropriate for automating the robotic response to human behavior. We could use engineering measures like error, where we measure the distance between an actual position and some desired pose, or we could use a biologically relevant measure like energy, where we would ask how to accomplish a goal, such as moving from one point to another, using as little energy as possible. This might mean minimizing the distance we travel, or if there is an obstacle, we might save energy by going around it rather than jumping over it. Error and energy metrics enable us to interpret motion quality in a principled way, so that we can say that a movement is optimal with respect to error or energy. And this means we can make predictions about typical or normal movements provided that we can define a task as a time series of desired poses. We could also use task-specific or outcome-based measures, like how fast we get from one point to another. This would make all of these motions equivalent in terms of their quality. So task-specific measures can capture the qualitative task description, but interpretations and predictions based on the results of task-specific measures may only be applicable to narrow sets of animal behavior. From an information theoretic perspective, information is measured from random variables with a probability distribution or density that describes how often we expect to measure those values. Using a probability distribution over a state space to define a task works well for human motion because of the substantial variation that exists in normal human movement both within and between individuals. If we define a task on a density map like this and define a particular pose as a point on that map, how do we measure how well the point or series of points represents the density map over the whole space? In other words, how can we quantify the fact that this motion does not represent the task very well, this movement represents the task pretty well, and this movement represents the task best of all. It turns out that when we use information measures, specifically a metric on ergodicity, we can quantify this relationship. And like the task-specific measures, we can find two very different motion strategies where there would be a large amount of error between them, but under the information measure, they would be of similar quality. To test this, we recruited 53 people to participate in a robotic training study where participants completed a task with and without assistance. The information measure captured differences between experimental conditions in the following ways. First, we could use both task-specific measures, like the time to target, and the information measure to detect the presence of assistance, which you can also think of as a reduction of deficit. The error measure did not detect this difference. Second, we found that the task-independent measures, error and ergodicity, captured the effects of training, while the task-specific measures did not capture any changes in movement quality due to practice. This led us to conclude 
that information measures allow us to identify phenomena that would not otherwise be captured by an error measure or task-specific measures alone. These results support the idea that ergodicity is a principle of motion for interpreting and predicting human movement, with potential implications for the design of effective feedback and training strategies in human-robot interaction.